Welcome to the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. My name is Jennifer DeMud, Executive Director of the Manufacturing Growth Alliance, also known as MGA. Today we are talking with a food manufacturer in Harrison Township on the east side of the state. Dave's Sweet Tooth is an award-winning soft toffee with an easy-on-your-teeth cookie-like crunch. In fact, the only thing hard about eating Dave's Sweet Tooth is resisting another delicious bite. Owner Andrew Shimalewski is here with us today. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So excited to talk about manufacturing. All right. All right. Dave's Sweet Tooth has an interesting beginning. The founder is a retired Detroit firefighter. So, Andy, you have to tell us, how did a firefighter get started making toffee? So, you know, if you have any firefighters in your family, you know that, uh, you know, they, they eventually learn to cook, right? They cook for the guys at the engine house. They might be cooking for 10, 12 guys at a time. So um, they can all cook. They generally end up being pretty good cooks, pretty good bakers. And my dad has always had a certain like affinity for, for baking. Um, you know, he just kind of enjoys the, uh, you know, the reactions that he gets from people when they try some of uh, the stuff that he makes, whether it's chocolate chip cookies or banana nut bread, or in this case, uh, almond toffee. So he started making it for the guys at the engine house, um, packaging it in mason jars, giving it for friends and family for the holidays and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, pretty soon people just started calling the house asking for, you know, uh, six jars here, a dozen jars there, and uh, pretty much just took off from there. No, that is a great story. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. So I appreciate your slogan, handmade, homemade, small batch goodness. Over the holiday break, I was pleasantly surprised to have a small batch of goodness delivered to my home. Your toffee was a welcomed treat uh, in my household over the holidays. With toffee this good, how has your business grown over the years? And what is your projected growth moving forward? Sure. Yeah. No. Um, you know, I mean, the toffee, like you said, it's 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 a great product. It it sells itself. We started simple with just the original like milk chocolate and dark chocolate toffee. Um, went on from there to do, you know, coffee toffee, dark chocolate cherry, peanut butter, some of the holiday flavors that we have now. So it's grown tremendously over the last couple of years, honestly. We started making it in the home kitchen, making everything by hand, you know, it's all homemade. Uh, and you know, to be honest, we still, we still make it the exact same way that my dad used to make it in the kitchen uh, when we used to make it in my mom's kitchen before she kicked us out. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, it's all, it's all made by hand. It's, uh, you know, in a lot of cases broken by hand, packaged by hand, you know, we use the same ingredients, uh, you know, real butter, real sugar, chocolate, you know, almonds, uh, you know, pretty simple, straightforward, no artificial like ingredients or, you know, flavorings, any kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's just a, you know, it's just a simple, good product that people get a lot of joy out of, you know, ours is a little bit different. It's a softer toffee. It doesn't really stick in your teeth like traditional English toffee. And I think that's what really people, you know, turns people on about it. That's what they really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So where, where is your projected growth moving forward? Um, so, you know, I mean, we've been fortunate enough to have, you know, year over year, uh, you know, pretty, pretty substantial growth. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, we went from maybe five, six years ago, making it out of a kitchen and selling at a craft show to, uh, you know, we now have a 10,000 square foot facility over in Harrison Township, uh, about a dozen employees. And, uh, you know, from here, we're just, we're, we're hoping to continue that growth. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll increase by another, you know, 50 to hundred percent in sales, uh, in 2021, you know, 2020 was a, a weird year. We had to pivot a little bit, but, uh, you know, we were able to fortunately, um, you know, hold our own, I guess, so to speak. And, and, um, you know, we, we didn't meet the the same fate as a lot of other, you know, small manufacturers and we were hope we were able to hang on. So we're looking forward to, you know, continuing growth in, in 2021. Well, with it being handmade, someone could really purchase a jar and just put it in their own candy dish and say that they made it. Correct. That's true. And we encourage people to do that. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's, uh, it saves you the time. It is, it is quite a tedious product to make. It is uh, somewhat of a hassle. Um, you know, you can burn it very easily, ruin it. So yeah, I mean, Hey, if that's, if that's your thing, you know, impress your friends, you know, I love it. By the way, I didn't do that over the holidays. We, we, we talked a little bit about your packaging over the holidays, which I'm going to ask you about here in just a little bit. 
Sure. So as you've grown your business, 10,000 square foot facility, fantastic. Um, what challenges have you encountered over the years? Can you share with other manufacturers that might be listening? Sure, sure. I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges for any small business, uh, you know, especially in the last 12 months, I think has really been cash flow. You know, um, I found that, uh, you know, as we've grown, you know, the, uh, the bills and the POs and everything, it just gets, you just add more zeros to the end of everything. It just gets bigger, you know? So it's just becomes, instead of, you know, floating a thousand dollars here, you're floating 10 or 20 or $30,000, you know, it just, it just gets bigger. So, um, really, I think, uh, you know, one of the main things that we're trying to focus on is, is really, um, you know, getting a grip on, on like cash flow and making sure that we're not, um, you know, overextending ourselves, committing to doing things that, you know, are going to, are going to cause us harm in the short term here. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's one of the biggest things is, you know, a cash flow. So some challenges that other manufacturers, de- depending on sector has had in 2020 is a supply chain, uh, mainly disruption because of the pandemic. Have you had any challenges with your supply chain being a food manufacturer? Sure, absolutely. You know, I think back in, uh, you know, uh, February, March, April, you know, when the whole pandemic kind of started, uh, started picking up speed, um, you know, we weren't sure who was going to be around in, you know, next week or next month and, uh, you know, where our supplies were going to come from. So we were fortunate enough to kind of stock up a little bit on some of our raw materials and, um, you know, find we have secondary suppliers in place. Um, we had a little bit of a disruption, you know, on things that, uh, like, uh, that go through third parties. Um, some of our, our jars, for instance, or our packaging, uh, you know, some of those, uh, those manufacturers, they really had some slowdowns or, you know, they couldn't source raw materials, which, you know, then that cascaded to, you know, to us and kind of became our issue. So yeah, we've definitely dealt with our, our fair share of, uh, disruptions in our supply chain, but fortunately enough, uh, you know, we were able to, uh, find alternatives or, you know, um, help our, help those manufacturers to overcome, you know, the, the hurdles that they had and, and get everybody back on track. So. That sounds like you were very proactive. Absolutely. As much as possible. Yeah. As much as possible. You know, like I said, nobody really knew what to expect. So you just kind of, uh, you know, we, we took the, uh, the approach of kind of preparing for the worst and, um, you know, I think it, uh, it, it worked out okay for us. So many small manufacturers and all sectors um, of manufacturing um, have started to understand and assess the industry 4.0 technologies. It's pretty broad and pretty deep as far as uh, what type of new technologies can be brought into a manufacturing facility. Have you considered or adopted any of the industry 4.0 um, opportunities to increase efficiency, satisfy customers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I mean, you know, when the, when the, when the pandemic began, I think one of the big things for, um, you know, smaller manufacturers like, uh, like us was to, uh, really to pivot our business model. You know, we are, uh, we're in the habit of selling a lot to, you know, distributors and wholesale accounts who then in turn take and sell our product, put it on store shelves. When, when, those stores started, you know, being forced to close their doors or cut POs and really take a look at their business and and make sure that they had not only, um, you know, the essentials like the, like, uh, you know, hand sanitizer and toilet paper and lunch meat and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, You know, they were really focused on that for a while. Um, But, uh, you know, they were, they were kind of cutting on, on some of the, the frills, if you will, right? Like the, uh, the smaller items like ours that are more of a luxury and not a necessity. Mm -hmm. And so we really had to consider our business model and take a, take a hard look at it. And what we found was, you know, that having our, our website and really promoting our online business was, was a way that we really wanted to, uh, to take the company, uh, in that direction and, and, and kind of grow that aspect of our business. You know, we own that sales channel, um, we are kind of dependent on, uh, you know, FedEx and USPS and things like that, which, you know, I could talk about for hours here, you know, it being January and just going through that, but, uh, you know, we, we kind of own that sales channel. So we really focus on growing that. And that's been a huge help for us, uh, you know, so that online store, um, social media marketing, and then internally, you know, kind of automating some, uh, some systems from, you know, invoicing to, um, 
you know, creating POs for our orders, inventory tracking, uh, you know, that's been extremely helpful as well. So we're not uh, by any means completely automated or anything like that, but uh, we have, we are aware of the tools available and have started to implement some of those into our business to kind of streamline processes and, and make things more efficient. You know, I'm thrilled to hear that because uh, from, from my perspective and perspective of experts, if manufacturers don't start adopting some of these, these technologies that have been out there for a while and there are new technologies surfacing uh, weekly, you know, you have to evolve or you, sure. you might be replaced, you know, in 10 years. So I'm thrilled you're going to be around for a while. Hopefully, hopefully that's <laughs> because you're, you're adopting those technologies. Um, yeah. So I mentioned your packaging here just a, a few questions ago, and I want to ask you a, a question about it. Uh, first and foremost, your packaging is unique. Uh, it's pretty cool. We, we passed it around uh, the household for those that were here. We had a small gathering, but um, it's classic, it's fun, and I believe it's inviting. Um, how has your packaging evolved over the years, um, and how often do you assess your packaging? You know, it's, it's, it's come a long way. We'll just put it that way. You know, when my dad used to make it, he used to put the toffee in big, like 32 ounce ball Mason jars. And, you know, a friend of ours designed like a little logo that just said Dave sweet tooth. And we used to print them on Avery labels on, on, on our home computer and just stick them on the side of the jar. You know, if you've ever seen a ball Mason jar, it's embossed oh, yes. on the side. So they're kind of like crinkly and, you know, it's just not like a, it was just kind of like really homemade, you know, handmade, um, not, not pretty, but, um, you know, it, it did the trick, uh, for, 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 for the time being, you know, um, but since then, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, we've, we've shrunk the packaging. We went down to a 16 ounce jar, you know, got rounded jars. So they weren't, it wasn't embossed, um, changed the label a couple of times. Um, and then we had suggestions to, you know, put it in even smaller packaging, uh, more of a four ounce. So we had, uh, you know, like kind of like cellophane bags that we put stickers on. And then we got, uh, you know, we got some bags that were uh, craft paper and made some stickers and stuck those on there, which looked a little bit more professional. And then we got the bags printed. And then, you know, we had uh, uh, all the five flavors kind of look the same. So we, we had a designer design something, you know, with flavor cues and different color bands to kind of denote the different flavors. And, and that's kind of where we are now in our, in our packaging, um, you know, lifetime here. So we're constantly looking at ways to improve it. You know, the uh, it's great doing craft shows and stuff when people can taste the product, but when it's sitting on a shelf in a store and someone's never tasted it, you know, the packaging is really that first impression. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that we get people to pick it up look at it, go, this is interesting and really give it a try. So I think it's, it's probably one of the most important things, uh, you know, for, for a small business, especially in the food, uh, manufacturing, you know, game that we're in mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, grabbing that attention from somebody who's never had the product when you're not there to introduce them to it. And, uh, you know, our packaging, I think, uh, does a pretty good job of that. I'll have to say it was the first thing I grabbed out of my, my Michigan made gift box. So, sure. Um, yeah. We try to stick with that jar theme. You know, if you know, like you said, the, the packaging looks like a Mason jar, mm -hmm. um, you know, it just kind of jumps out at you. It's something unique, um, something different, something that you really don't see with, uh, with anybody else's packaging. So we're, we're pretty proud of it. And uh, you know, hopefully it just keeps, uh, keeps doing what it's supposed to do. So you're Michigan based, you started in Michigan, you're growing in Michigan and in review of, of your website, which I encourage um, others to, to go check out, um, you're, you're, you really focus in on Michigan being your home state. Sure. Why is it so important uh, for Dave's Sweet Tooth to stay in Michigan and grow in Michigan? You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm on it. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a little biased. Um, you know, I, I was born and raised here in Michigan. I've traveled all over the world, um, you know, been to, you know, tons of different States and, um, you know, we, my wife and I, we just, we love it here. Um, my family's here, uh, grew up here. I, I love the changing of the seasons. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really a great place to be. And over the last, I'd say five to 10 years, uh, you know, there's, the manufacturing industry in Michigan has really kind of uh, grown and taken off. And it's, um, you know, there's a lot of pride uh, of people here with, uh, m with what they make, you know, um, just making products, uh, whether they're widgets or food. And, uh, you know, we're just excited to be a part of that, uh, that whole community uh, it really does feel like a, like a family, like community. We, uh, you know, we're just happy to be a part of it. So uh, I, we plan to be here for, for the long term. I, I can't see us going anywhere else. Michigan does make things 
And um, thinking of Michigan, uh, I've been in the small business space for well over, well over a decade, probably mm -hmm. 14 years. Um, and I know that there are a lot of resources out there uh, to support startups and growing businesses. Have you accessed any of the resources in Michigan to, to support your phases um, of sure. being a small manufacturer? Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many great resources in Michigan. You know, we started out when we were small with the uh, the MSU Product Center uh, was a great, uh, you know, great starting point for us. Our counselor, Becky there, uh, Becky DeYoung, was just a, a fantastic resource and, and helped us along, um, you know, still stay in touch with her to this day and, you know, try to help uh, any other small businesses that we can, um, you know, on their path of growth. Uh, but, you know, we've participated in uh, numerous programs, you know, the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program, the Michigan Small Business Association, you know, obviously, you know, you guys in the Manufacturers Growth Alliance are a great resource as well. So, yeah, I think there's there's so many small business resources. Uh, you know, that's another reason why Michigan is such a great place to, to start a business and grow a business, because there's just, like I said, that community of people that are just there to help, that have the knowledge, that have the experience and, and really just and really care about the success of small business. So yeah, it's, we have, we have a lot of fun too. Well, well, the state could use that audio clip. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just explaining. You have <laughs> my, resources complete, in Michigan. I have my complete permission. You know, <laughs> use whatever you like. All right. Great. Um, what advice do you have for a startup food manufacturer in Michigan? Can you share any advice? Besides don't do it. No, you know? no. Yes. Besides <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Um, you know, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, oh, man, I, I, I wish, you know, 10 years ago, I knew what I knew, what I know now. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's constant learning every day. I mean, you really have to be able to dedicate 110% of your time and your effort into, you know, really growing, uh, your business and you, you have to just enjoy what you're doing. You know, if it's a hobby and you're just kind of, you know, want to, take it to the next level. I mean, that's, that's all well and good, but to kind of dump everything into growing a business. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's not as simple as just, uh, you know, saying I'm going to do it. You know, there's so many other things that go into it from, you know, the accounting aspect to the marketing, the sales, it's not just making a product and then everybody's going to flock to put it on the shelves. You know, it's, uh, there's that I'd say making a good product is only about, you know, 10 to 20% of the entire thing. And the rest of it is all stuff that I, didn't even, didn't even think about when I started out. It was just, you know, we're going to make a bunch, we're going to make a bunch of toffee and we're going to sell it and we're going to, you know, make a bunch of money and uh, still waiting for that last part, you know, still, <laughs> still working on it. Yeah. And for what you said about resources, certainly, you know, entrepreneurs don't know what they don't know and accessing resources would, would certainly help them as well. Yeah, I think, you know, the resources have been hugely beneficial to us. Like you said, you don't know what you don't know. And um, I would just encourage people, if you're going to start a food business, you know, do some research, uh, go to some of these events, uh, contact some of these, uh, these resources and, you know, run your idea past a couple of people, see, you know, who else is out there doing something similar or the same, um, you know, see if you can talk to them. The food community in particular is, uh, is, is very helpful. Everybody's, you know, so nice, so kind, so, you know, really cares about what everybody else is doing and uh, willing to share uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of valuable information and, and, you know, maybe get you thinking about some things that you, uh, you know, you didn't realize you needed to be thinking about if you're going to jump in head first. So this is my last question and it's a tough one. All right. So hang on. Um, how can someone get their hands on your homemade Michigan made products? Wow. That is, that is a tough one. Um, <laughs> I say, you know, the best place is uh, the best way to get your hands on our toffee is uh, to go to our website at www.davesweettooth.com. And, uh, you know, you can see a full list of our, uh, our products uh, in the four ounce bags, the eight ounce jars, we've got, you know, gift packs, combo packs, uh, you know, so that's, that's the complete list there. Um, but then, you know, we're, our products are available in, in Meyer, Kroger, you know, all of your smaller independent grocery stores like a Nino Savaggio's, Vincent Joe's, Randazzo's, Plum Market, Bush's, uh, Whole Foods, you know, those type of places, small boutique outlets. Um, you know, I think if you go into a, a, 
a lot of different stores these days, you'll, uh, you'll start to notice our product. Once you see it, you're, you're going to see it everywhere. So we we're in about, uh, I'd say about 5,000 stores now across the country. So, um, it's a pretty good chance you'll see it in your local grocery store. And if you don't see it, you can always ask for it. Absolutely. We're here. You know, we, get, I, we have people that walk into the production facility all the time, just wander in here and we're happy to sell you toffee, right? Uh, just kind of walk in, come on, say hello. We'll give you a tour, you know? Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Andrew, for being with us today. Really appreciate the insights that you've shared and I'm confident uh, your, your, uh, your words of wisdom will benefit uh, other small manufacturers across the state. Well, I appreciate it. I hope, uh, I hope, uh, I hope you're right, you know, and uh, any, and any, anything else I can do, just, uh, just let me know. Excellent. All right. Well, you've been listening to the Build Smart, Lead Strong podcast on the Michigan Business Network. Join us for our next podcast when MGA talks with a small manufacturer and another sector of manufacturing. Thanks again, Andrew. Thanks again. Have a good one. You too.